This is Diane Andrews in black and white. The issues you don't want to talk about. The arts and entertainment you need to know. And now here's your host, Diane Andrews. Turner, what's love got to do with it? Today we're going to do what's love got to do with sex in 50 shades because as you all know, 50 shades of gray is out there. I'm Diane Andrews. I'm your host of In Black and White. Thank you for being here with us today. Thank you out in the audience. Thank you in TV land and thank you in YouTube land. I want to give a shout out to two of my friends over at Matella's, which is uh, Carrie and Jesse, thanks for fixing my shoes the other day. I appreciate it. I've got three guests here that go are going to talk to you. We're going to talk about some issues that the older generation had, Glenda Davis and myself <laughs> have had. Thanks yes. for being here, Glenda. Yes, and you. the young kids who are in college or just graduated. E.J. Rogers, right. graduated from Southern University, and Sabrina Stewart, who is in mass communications at Southern University. You all see all these various items, uh, handcuffs, the Fifty Shades trilogy the uh, necktie there was a symbol of mr gray which was the name of the character's name is mr gray we're going to show you a clip for that in a few minutes too uh then let's talk about sports illustrated i don't know how many of you all have seen sports illustrated but when you look in here you think you're looking at hustler magazine it is more provocative than playboy with uh kate moss on it so that's why we want to talk about what's going on with sex in america and in the world. First, I want to start off asking you, what do you think of sexing? And let me just explain what sexing is to the public. It is usually from a mobile to mobile device, and you can send a provocative picture. It doesn't have to be nude. It can be a video or a message that's provocative. What do you think of that, E.J. Rogers? Well, <clears throat> I feel like if you have a significant other that, you know, that child are very close and you're able to send stuff like that to, well, you know, go ahead and send it. You know, that, that's between y'all two. But if you don't have the relationship with that other person and you send it out, like a lot of stuff could happen with those photos. And I know you wouldn't want, you know, naked photos of yourself to be spread across the world. So, you, you know, you just have to watch for stuff like that. Okay. And back in, you know, the generation before, what we had was if you took a provocative, nude, sexy, whatever the picture was, it went in the man's wallet. wallet. Yes. We didn't have to worry about the things no. that are out there today. But again, sexing does not have to be nude. I think I sent a, 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 a picture of the other guy to my guy, and it wasn't nude. It was just, you know, sexy picture. What do you, what do you think about that? Well, actually, I think that from our generation, no. Um, they were carried in our wallets. Right. Um, having children as I do and to see the things that they actually text um, as long as it's it's not taken outside mm -hmm. of the relationship 
I think it's pretty. Now, your kids are in college, right? A couple, one is in college or about to be or they high all, school? They're all graduated from college. That's right. Yeah, they're yes. older even than, the, than EJ and Sabrina. Yes. What kinds of things did you see them texting? Did any, did any of it bother you? Was it nude? Um, was it? Actually, it did bother me at first. It wasn't nude, but um, just after seeing how the new generation communicate with right. each other, yeah. um, it actually does make a better relationship for them in certain ways. Really? How so? You talking about girls to girls, friends only, or are you talking about boys and boys girls? Boys to girls. Okay. Yes. And they're sexing like, like, okay, this picture. Nothing very sports provocative. Yes. That's pretty provocative. Yes. Yeah, but if it's your, I guess I've yeah. always been the kind of person, my friends used to tease me, I've got to almost be married, you know, to be provocative with you. And, but these days, you know, I don't think it, it goes as far, or it goes a little further than further. back in our day. Do they really believe I can't get a man to be my man without sex uh, and being very provocative, Sabrina, in your age group? You don't have to speak as if it's from <laughs> you in case your mother sees this, but as oh. your friends talk. Uh, can you tell me what you all believe about this new age? Um, some females, yes, but I know as far as me, we have to be in a committed relationship for me to send something that extreme. Right. Other than that, no. But this some is girls, almost though like a bathing suit, yeah. but she took it a little further. They've, it's been mm -hmm. a lot of talk on Sports Illustrated, and if you look inside, Again, this is Playboy with Kate Moss, the actress. Sports Illustrated this year has more nudity, I think, in looking at it than Playboy does. Uh, of course, Hustler is a different, you know, a, a different magazine than these two. So what about your friends? Is it a lot of casual sex, which is said to be in this generation, more casual sex than your parents' generation? Yes, it's a lot of casual sex. Do people use protections as in reading this I didn't know they had something called a female condom but there is now a condom if women are unsure that the man they're with is going to use a condom and they're not using protective birth control and just for the STDs I would tell people let's use some protection for that unless you want to have a baby or a potential for a lot of deadly diseases out here today even with oral sex I am getting ready to do a show uh, later this month on young women being raped. And one of the women that I have on there was sodomized for a year and a half, and that's all her uncle did to her was sodomize her. He's in prison right now, and that show will be coming up. So what do you think about, uh, we won't have to go, I'm not going to go into all different types of sex that we have here in, that, that are out in the world today, that are here in the world, but I, have you all seen the show Sex Box? I was watching and investigating for this show. I know, EJ, you've seen it. It's out of England, and they have a big box in the middle of a stage. It's a studio with an audience, and you actually have all kinds of assistive devices inside this big box, this room. They call it the sex box, though. And you go in, and you use these devices, and you come out. I didn't see the entire show on YouTube, but you come out either happy or still sad mm -hmm. <laughs> after, after you've had whatever the experiences are in the sex box. There's another show that comes on in America on Sunday nights on, on TLC named All About Sex. And there, <laughs> there is another show, a movie, Fifty Gray, Shades of Grey. I did go see the Fifty Shades of Grey movie. I don't know how many of y'all have seen the YouTube phenomenon. The three elders, they call them, they're older women, they're three sisters, mm -hmm. and they're all in their 80s. I looked at their YouTube analysis of Fifty Shades of Grey. And one lady said, I've had a lot of sex in my life. I gave the movie a nine and a half. I, what I like, if you have to go beyond in Fifty Gray, Shades of Grey to see that this man was damaged and he had problems, but they were both very much in love with, her, with each other in, in their own ways. So what do you think? I know none of you all have seen Fifty Shades. Will you go to see Fifty Shades of Grey? Yes. Yeah, it's something that I plan on saying. Was it after I, I talked today, when we talked earlier before the show, you decided, or was it already in your mind to see it? I already wanted to see it. Yeah. I already wanted to see it, too. It's just, you know, my work schedule been kind of mm -hmm. heavy, so I haven't had time. What about you, Glenda? Would you still, you and your husband, would you go together? Would you go Yes, by absolutely. Uh -huh. we, we do have definite plans to see it. Oh, okay, great. Yes. And again, I think it's a, it's a good movie. He took, and I want you to tie me up my arms with this. Oh, Sabrina, tie Sabrina. Uh, just your hands, I want to show you. This is one of the techniques that he used in the movie with a silk tie. 
he would tie uh, the lady. Her name is Steel. I thought that was cute too. Mm -hmm. Fifty Shades of Grey is about him, mm -hmm. and her name is Miss Steel, and he's Mr. Grey. Uh huh. Uh, just very abstract in, sure. in the names. He would tie up even looser than that, I think, and then he would, they would, uh, he would pin it to a bed post, mm -hmm. you know, with with the tie. He would tie the tie to a post. With I think today in t in today's world that these are the kinds of things. I'm not telling people what to do with sex, but. I think if you look at what sex is about today, and it's been around for thousands of years, that people do these kinds of things. That you may take a little um, flower or a little feather and, you know, put powder and, and tickle a person with it. I think you'll see a lot of things that this guy is doing in what's called now normal sex acts, the one in Fifty Shades of Grey. So tell me, if we talk about relationships, there are seven types of relationships. What kind, uh, are you monogamous? Uh, tell me what you prefer. Monogamy, I don't want to get anybody in trouble up here, right? So you don't have to tell me what you're in. <laughs> Casual dating, friendship. Um, they've got one called One Night Stand. They've got one that I won't uh, call sex dating. Uh, they mm -hmm. don't call it sex, they call it something else. You're just buddies and mm -hmm. uh, you have sex. And then they've got the casual dating. What do you all think? Do you have like casual dating? I didn't know casual dating had sex in it until I read this on WebMD. Yeah. So it <laughs> takes it beyond a friendship. And you you actually have sex in a casual dating relationship. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, nowadays, you know, just everything is more fast paced. So, you know, you know, you you might not plan on having sex within that week span, but it happens. Well, what's the difference in casual dating you all and friends with benefits? I mean... You don't have to be friends, I guess, in casual dating? Well, I guess that's casual what dating, you know, you actually, you know, going on dates, actually doing things with that other person, which in friends with benefits is just that. Like, you know, it's only sex. So you only calling them for sex. Did you see the movie with, uh, it was Friends with Benefits, I think, with um, Natalie Portman? And uh, Ashton Cooper, Cooper used to be Demi Moore's I, husband. I have not seen they called that, it no. friends with benefits, and they were friends, and they did things, and it evolved into a love affair. Neither one of them said she was getting medical school. Neither one of them said they wanted that kind of relationship. But I, so I didn't see a lot of difference in that than than just the casual mm -hmm. dating. But casual dating can lead to love a lot. I guess. Well, friendship I've seen where you have no sex, never had sex, and the phenomenon. It said that marry your best friend. Have you ever, you all ever heard that before? Marry your best sure, friend because you have a lot in common. Sure. And if you don't marry someone, if you marry just for sex, you may not have a lot in common. A guy once told me, his father told him, if you've got two girls, they're both beautiful, or both look the way you want them to look, and also both of them are, are uh, educated, you know, have good jobs, marry the one that's the best in bed. Would you say that? Also, EJ, as a man. Married. If they're equal in every other right, pretty much. But what would you marry? The one, how do you make a decision, I guess? And his father said the way you make a decision is how are they in bed? Well, I mean, my decision will come up, come upon, you know, which is the better, better mother, uh, you know. Going to be the better to, mother. Going to be the better mother. You know, I want somebody who's responsible enough to, you know, manage the household and also, you know, be able to raise the kids. I, you know, it really doesn't matter about the bed situation. It doesn't? It, I, mean, I don't think many men would say that. Mm, right. What do you think your husband would say? Um, if he, he had back in the day. He would say what he just said, uh -huh. honestly. So, so that does. he's similar to an older generation. Yes. Absolutely. Do you think most think. of the guys you know would say that? They would say he was better in bed. <laughs> they would say, speak up a little bit. They would say he was better in bed, definitely. That's, yeah, if they were all pretty much equal now, and that means that, cause you, because you don't know who's going to be the better mother until it happens, but you can think, you know, you know, and how they care for people, but they're pretty much equal in every right except that bed scene. And this guy, a couple of guys have told me their father would tell them, get the one that's the better in bed because she can keep you happy uh, and more content the longest. I mean, that, that could be true, yeah. but it just depends on what you're looking for and that person that you're talking to. Right, that's true. Everything in life depends on what you end up looking for. We're going to take a little short break, and we'll be right back with what about all about it, sex in Fifty Shades. <laughs>
Order your copies now of Diane Andrews' latest books, Third Man Out, a suspenseful mystery by Diane Andrews, and Gumbo for the Heart, 25 stories of faith, hope, and charity, both available now on Amazon.com. love got to do with it and in 50 shades so we're back and now I want to ask the question to Glenda Glenda yes. tell me how you and your husband how long have you been married did I see you say 30 years or something like that we've been together for 30 and uh -huh. I've been married for 28 how do you keep the romance going what do you do how, how do you make it still sexual in your relationship well <laughs> um, our latest if I could um, give you a little secret we went out to a dinner and it was a local restaurant and it was an aphrodisiac dinner I've never heard of that uh, yes. so tell us more it was it was actually very very nice um, it was a five course meal and um, the really came out and explained everything to us as um, what each meal corresponded to mm -hmm. and there was a couple of each tides. course of the meal yes what, what did they serve what what um, we had to begin with. We had oysters. Mm -hmm. with I figured oysters was on the plate. Yes, which was incredible. Um, were they raw oysters? Or yes. We, yes. It was a raw oyster yes. with some strawberries atop of it. Really? How does that yes. taste? I've it never even heard of that. Good. It was really? very good. But we began our dinner with a couple of aphrodisiac drinks. Um, which are? What, what did um, you have? Well, one of them, I think, was a, it was kind of a wine and um, cocoa mixture. Uh-huh. Is what we began. And it was with. good? Yes, it was delicious. They it had was. those cocoa chocolate martinis. Was it a martini? It was something similar to it. Uh -huh. um, and we had, um, it's called... Dinner, dinner with diner, um, which was something. It was new to me. I had okay, never, I've never heard of it, it either. Before. I, I didn't even know they had aphrodisiac yes, dinners, but yes. that's good to know. But there was a couple of ties on the table. Um, the groups around us. Um, I actually is it a, a special room that this yes. restaurant puts the people who yes. want the aphrodisiac dinner? Yes, it was. It okay. was a special room uh -huh. for How everyone. How many couples? I would say there was probably about maybe 15 or 20 couples. Did you know each other? We Where, did was it not. planned? No one knew each other. No okay, so that was fun. Other. Was yes. it fun? Did you all it get was. to know each other doing this? Uh, it, we did. did. Yeah. Um, actually, there was a couple on the side of us who was married, I think, like 55 years. Oh, wow. And do you know they say sex gets better after 50 years of marriage? You yes. do more sex after 50 years of marriage than you do your first five years. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And after meeting them, I totally agree with really? that. Really? Were they still yes. sexual? And they, yes, they were. They actually they bought me a couple PDA. of PDA. They, they had show <laughs> public affection, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's yes. great. Yes. That's what women want at the end of the day. We want romance. It doesn't yes. have to cost Absolutely. a lot of money, but we want romance. But it was very gentle. Um, there was a couple of ties, as I mentioned, that was put on top of the table, and it was to blindfold your partner yeah. as you fed the partner their dinner and so they didn't know it's it, it you were blindfolded. So at yes. that you it was some suspense in your mind. What is this going to be just because you can't see it? Absolutely. Right? Yes. And then you had to tell what it was by taste. They didn't tell right. you. Right. Could you determine what it was by taste? Not really. Really. Yes, that was the suspense of it. Right. Yes. So your husband told you what yes. it was. Now was everyone in this room married, you think? Uh, you don't know. I'm what? not quite sure, but yeah. um I would not. Were there think younger so. couples there too? Not there just was. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Trying to keep the spark alive or just sure. do just do something new. Yes. People love, and women do, we love adventure. We love to do something new. And men love adventure, too. Yes. And, you know, uh, sneaking around, I remember that, well, I won't go that far. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about how do you all keep your relationship. You're from California. Yes. She is from <laughs> Los Angeles, California. And we know over there, everybody's beautiful. If they don't yes. have it, they buy it. Right. And so if you're buying it, you got to make somebody want to see it and want to mm -hmm. have it. So what do you all do out there on the new beaches and all of this kind of um, thing? Actually, yeah, a lot of people, if you don't have it, you go buy it. I mean, I'm kind of fortunate. I have a little something back there. Um, <laughs> it's not only there, everybody <laughs> everywhere. Right, everybody. Get toes fixed. I know a person who had their toe Definitely. plastic surgery. 
<laughs> no, but um, even what Marilyn I, Monroe had plastic surgery when I was she? doing a show um, last week about suicide. Mm -hmm. She had her chin and nose done. I looked at her before picture and her after picture. You know, after she became famous, and I looked up and said, Marilyn Monroe ever had plastic surgery? In fact, you can buy where she entered the hospital for six hundred and ninety thousand mm. dollars. They wow. had the you know the slip from oh the hospital goodness. where she was in the hospital for the for the plastic surgery in the fifties. I would have been afraid. But anyway, I'm sorry. Go on. Oh no, you're okay. Yeah. But I actually talked to someone who plays football, and I guess a lot of females throw themselves at them, so I guess. They have a real, yeah, <laughs> does, yeah. a way I kind of keep myself relevant. Me and my girlfriends went to Victoria's Secret, bought lingerie, and right. I had a photo shoot, and before did every game. Did they do game, that at Victoria's Secret? Did oh, no, 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 I did it, yeah, yeah, myself at home. Are you dating someone special in Casually your life? Casually dating, but it's Casual the distance, dating? so. You said casual dating? Yes. Okay. So you gave him the photo. Yeah. The, uh -huh. Before every game, I send a photo. Oh, that's cute. That's mm -hmm. cute. This is the guy you're casual dating yes. with the physique. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. Is he here or is he in L.A.? In L.A. right now. Oh, does he play college ball, professional no, NFL. ball? No, NFL. Oh, NFL. Okay. I know mm -hmm. you're sending something in Victoria's Secret. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But how long have you known the guy? Since high school. Oh, okay. So you, you go way back. So yeah. you got that, that advantage mm -hmm. of it. Who, can you tell us who he plays for? I just wanted yeah, to see Jacksonville. There in, California, in Jacksonville. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. Do you go to games? Do you do you do anything special Unfortunately, before you prepare to go? Unfortunately, last semester I was still playing softball, so I couldn't go. But yeah. yeah. So will you? How will you prepare to go see a man who plays professional football? You've been knowing him for knowing him from a long time, mm -hmm. and do you think he casually dates other women also? Have I you mean, talked I about it? Yeah, I wouldn't put it past him, though. He's a man, right? Yeah. yeah and I some women, too. Him. I wouldn't just say it's a man these days, right. because a lot of women are, too. So, and, and so you all are casually dating. You assume he sees other people. Would you, um, uh, how would you prepare to go and uh, see this man? What would you do? As you mentioned, Victoria's Secret. Oh, definitely I would take another trip to Victoria's Secret. And when I got there, I would go to probably Hobby Lobby, get... You know, the rose petals, candles, and all that. Uh huh. And just. Will you take a blindfold with you, or will you yeah. <laughs> let him blindfold you in one of the ties, like they do in Fifty Shades? Blindfolding, I think, has been going on for the beginning of time with Cleopatra's days. So I don't really think blindfolding is that big a deal, but I think it's very romantic and it's different because you have a sense yes. of, tell me what? It actually makes the senses stronger. Mm -hmm. Just like an actual blind person. Yes. Because then you smell more. Do you think it's just the brain stopping to pay attention more to, to the listen and the smell of what's going on because you don't have this sense, the I eye sense, so. the sight yes. to see so I, I, these others become more alert right. when it's things like that. You know, we talked about uh, a little bit in the break about uh, people having threesomes, and that's more popular. I understand sadomasochism in the younger generation is more popular, too, where it's actually hurting the other person. What's your perception on that, EJ? Which, the threesome or the... One at a time. <laughs> well, um, I don't have a problem with the threesome. You know, if it's another female, you know, I don't really do the male thing. You know, that's not my thing. But so you it, wouldn't be with two men and a, and a woman, but if it's two women and you, it's a good thing. Yeah, it's a great thing. <laughs> do people ever do three men and one woman? Do they do three to one? I don't know. Do they? Is there too I many mean, bodies climbing over each other? I mean, I, I think they, they do do that, but I don't think it's all three of them in a the room. They might take a turn and, you know, they call that. What do they call that? A flip session. I never heard the term. I'm glad I asked. I was just asking, do they do three to one? Okay, so it's a flip session, you all. Okay, we've learned a new term here. You ever heard of it? It's just no, a, I've us never older generation. Have you heard of flip yes. See, the young people, yes. tell me what other terms we don't know anything about. Flip session. I may have five women over here waiting in for you, or just three, three nah, women. It'll be, it'll be like, say I invite some friends over, you know, my partners or friends or yeah. associates, uh -huh. and they have a, you know, I have a friend that's, you know, a lady's friend that's, you know, about, you Will know, le yeah, willing. Willing and able-bodied to, this is not rape, like, you know, at the, no, of course, I know we're not talking about that, like at Duke or some of these universities when people holler with rape. Now, at Animal House, their thing was in college, I'm going to get the woman drunk so I can take advantage of her. So this is not a drunk woman. This is a woman who comes and says, hey, I got, I'm up for this. I want to do it. This is what I like. Yes. Okay, continue. <laughs> and, you know, we'll all take our turns. And mm. after, after we're done, we'll tell her she could leave. It was Just like that. Talking about the F 
buddy, right? Mm -hmm. And so she may come back another month and say, I like this one and this one and this one. She will choose the one she wants next. If she likes, I'll say, I'll do it again. Have you all, do you repeat this kind of session? I mean, we tend to. With the same woman or different women? Are they easy uh, to find now in college, women that do this? Kind of. See, now, I, I have no problem learning how to be blindfolded and things like that. I think that's, that, you know, that could be done for me. But that one takes it uh, to the extremes. Extreme. Do you know yes. girlfriends of yours who have, have and, and I'm not judging, but for me, it would take it to the extreme. What, what do you uh, think Girlfriends of Girlfriends that? that have been flipped, no. That's not really a good look as far as from our point of view. Well, I hope you all keep it more <laughs> secret of who it is. You may have girlfriends, maybe that right. they didn't come back and tell you maybe they were flipped, right? Told me, but right. Most times you'll hear it from the males, the girls that they are do tell that they flip these girls. Yes. Something to learn every day, and that's why we're doing this sex, right, in Fifty Shades. And we may do another sex show uh, because this has been a, a lot of fun for me because I do a lot of very heavy, we do a lot of very heavy topics here at Diane Andrews in Black and White. Hopefully you've learned something. But I tell you, Fifty Shades of Grey is not that extreme. At the end, uh, he did whip her, but she asked him to. And I didn't like that part, but he did foreplay. When a man tells you, uh, I'm going to pick you up. He doesn't tell you where we're going, but he puts you in his jet and he flies you around the world. It was pretty exciting to me. Uh, and again, but it doesn't have to be a jet. All it's got to be is show me some romance. Show me some affection. Show me that I'm special. Isn't that what we want at the end of the day for a woman? Thank you very much here at Diane Andrews in black and white. We'll be right back. Order your copies now of Diane Andrews' latest books, Third Man Out, a suspenseful mystery by Diane Andrews, and Gumbo for the Heart, 25 stories of faith, hope, and charity, both available now on Amazon.com. you enjoy Tina Turner who's more sexier at 70 something and on that YouTube she's about 70 years old than Tina Turner at the end of every show I do a ritual called lighting a white candle and I saw this when I was a little girl growing up in Marouge Louisiana and it has stayed with me all my life if at the end of the day if all of us tried to give back and help the world it would make this world such a bright more brighter place so envision your candles lighting up all over your neighborhood and try to go out and light that candle for someone who needs some help. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next week. Be sure to keep tuning in, and I thank you for the compliments when I see you on the street the days I look good. Bye-bye, Diane Andrews.